Welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Davis, and I'd like to thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to explain some bariatric procedures and options for our patients. A little bit about myself. I'm from New York City. I've done a fellowship at Yale University. I've been studying and practicing bariatric surgery for over five years. I've been trained in several laparoscopic uh, procedures that are focusing on bariatric surgery. The more common procedures to date that we offer at our facility are the laparoscopic gastric band procedure, the sleeve gastrectomy, and the ruin y gastric bypass procedures. Our learning objectives for today are first, to identify obesity as a chronic disease and understanding that it is a growing public issue. To assess the perceptions and considerations of the morbidly obese individuals and bariatric surgery. Recognize the indications for bariatric surgery. Describe the current bariatric techniques and share our results. And we'll also review health benefits and discuss post-operative care of our patients. What is morbid obesity? Clinically severe obesity is the point where serious medical conditions occur as a direct result of obesity. It's defined as having greater than 200% of your ideal weight or being 100 pounds overweight. We also calculate it with the body mass index. The measure of your weight status is defined by your body mass index. And as you can see, you can calculate it with this equation or just Google it. It's measured in a classification, as you can see, from levels one through five. Obesity is a big problem and a major health issue worldwide. It affects 25% of the industrialized world. In America, 64% of adults suffer from morbid obesity. 32% of our children are overweight. 10 million people are morbidly obese. Over $75 billion are spent annually and over 400,000 deaths associated with obesity occur each year. Obesity worsens health and quality of life and shortens the life expectancy of our patients. Recent studies have concluded that obesity in adulthood is associated with a decrease in life expectancy of about seven years in both men and women. After smoking, it's the second leading preventable cause of death. Obesity-related illnesses include diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and as you can see, many others. And many people aren't aware that obesity can be associated with certain cancers. They include esophageal, breast, uterine, ovarian, prostate, colon, and even cervical cancer. The psychological concerns include low self-esteem, which is quite common in our patients and understandable. Non-medical concerns include physical, economic, and social issues. Our morbidly obese patients have physical concerns, including clothing choices, something as simple as tying one's shoelace, and personal hygiene. And that is usually due to the limits of their reach. Economic concerns, well, they have employment discrimination, getting hired, getting overlooked for that new promotion. And social concerns, weight harassment and prejudices, Studies show society has a low respect for the morbidly obese patients. The same level of respect is shown to alcoholics and drug addicts, and dating and marriage are less common in the morbidly obese patient. The components of an effective weight management program is a team approach. It requires a primary care provider, a psychologist, a surgeon, dietitian, athletic, and or physical therapist. The role of the primary care provider is to assist those who don't have a medical home, to guide their patients through a scientifically based diet versus a profit motivated one, with emphasis on long-term health and behavioral change. So what's the effectiveness of non-operative treatment alone? Well, unfortunately, patients often don't achieve medically significant long-term weight loss. They usually regain that weight loss after five years. In recent studies, the initial optimistic results have not been sustained. Nearly one third drop out. Dieting often causes depression, anxiety, irritability, weakness, and even preoccupation with foods. The end result of any diet should be improvement in your overall health. So why should you choose bariatric surgery? Well, as we discussed earlier, diet and exercise are not effective long-term. Surgery is the only proven method for long-term weight loss control in the morbidly obese patients when all other therapies have failed. It resolves comorbidities. There are standardized procedures with well-recognized and documented results. 
and the benefits of bariatric surgery have been shown to outweigh the risks of morbid obesity. I would like to discuss some of the lifestyle benefits of bariatric surgery. It can enhance your quality of life, improve mobility and stamina, increase your mood, self-esteem. You'll have better interpersonal effectiveness, lessen self-consciousness, increase the ability to explore social and vocational activities formerly inaccessible to you because of your weight, and it's been shown to increase marital satisfaction. I would like for you to understand that bariatric surgery is not a cure, but a tool to help manage comorbidities and help you lose weight and change behavior. Bariatric surgery is aggressive and should only be considered after conservative options have been explored. The National Institutes of Health, or the NIH, states that bariatric surgery is an option for carefully selected patients with clinically severe obesity when less invasive methods of weight loss have failed and the patient is at a high risk of obesity-associated morbidity or mortality. Surgery is indicated for patients with a BMI of greater than 40 or a BMI of 30 to 40 with significant comorbid conditions. So who is a bariatric surgical candidate? Those who meet the NIH criteria, which include being 100 pounds over your ideal body weight, having a body mass index greater than 40, or having a body mass index greater than 30 with significant comorbid conditions associated with obesity, being between the age of 18 to 60 with exceptions, and you've failed medically supervised weight loss attempts. You have to be an acceptable operative risk with no endocrine causes of obesity and dedicated to a lifestyle change and follow-up with our program. So who is not a surgical candidate? Those who are active substance abusers, those with psychiatric disorders, borderline personality disorders, including schizophrenia, active severe depression, binge type eating disorders, persons with defined non-compliance, and patients with cardiopulmonary diseases and other organic diseases, which make them poor surgical candidates. The typical bariatric patient profile includes many things. Most are between the ages of 25 to 45. They've usually suffered from obesity since childhood, and they are very educated and knowledgeable about the procedure. There are multiple psychological factors that need to be considered. Counseling is extremely important both before and after surgery. We have to consider the potential psychosocial problems such as depression with our patients. We need to be aware of the adverse psychological and emotional consequences of surgery. Proper psychiatric evaluation is critical and we need to ensure adherence to treatment. Bariatric surgery attacks obesity basically in two ways. A malabsorptive component, which restricts the amount of calories patients consume, and the restrictive component, which limits how much patients can consume in volume. The malabsorptive surgery is the duodenal switch. The restrictive procedures include the laparoscopic gastric band, the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, and then there's a combination procedure which is called the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass that limits the amount of volume and absorption of the patient's calories. Let's start with the biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal switch. It's primarily a malabsorptive procedure. It provides a larger pouch unlike the gastric bypass. There's a higher amount of weight loss with this procedure, lesser degree of nutrition absorption, no artificial apparatus, but it's not reversible. The Roux-en-Y gastric bypass uses a combination of restrictive and malabsorption. It's one of the most frequently performed bariatric procedures to date. There's no artificial apparatus, it is difficult to reverse, and there is significant malabsorption with this procedure. The laparoscopic adjustable banding, also known as the lap band procedure, is primarily a restrictive procedure. It was FDA approved in 2001. It's reversible, and there's no malabsorption component with this procedure. The sleeve gastrectomy is also a restrictive procedure. It requires stapling the stomach and removing the left side of that stomach permanently. There's no artificial apparatus. It's obviously not reversible. There's less malabsorption in comparison to the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass and the duodenal switch. And this procedure reduces the hormone called ghrelin, which is a hunger stimulating peptide. Now, all of these procedures that I've just discussed can be approached laparoscopically. What that means is we can use smaller incisions and 
place a camera into your abdominal cavity for better visualization of these structures. It provides fewer wound complications, less infection, fewer hernias, and less pain for our patients, which results in a faster recovery. Here you can see the mortality rate for these commonly performed procedures. Some of the complications of the gastric band include slippage, erosion, tube leaking, port infection, stomach perforation, esophageal dilatation, weight regain, and nausea and vomiting. This is one of the safest weight loss surgeries, having a mortality risk of less than one out of a thousand. Complications of the sleeve gastrectomy are broken down into two components, the early and the late complications. The early complications include leakage, perforation, stomach and intestinal injuries, internal bleeding, and intra-abdominal organ injuries. The late complications include the gastric fistula, a gastric outlet obstruction or stricture, nausea, vomiting, heartburn, and even wound infection. Patients can also regain their weight and have malabsorption issues with certain vitamins and minerals. The gastric bypass surgery also has early and late complications. The early complications include leakage, acute gastric remnant dilatation, and obstruction. Late complications might include anastomotic strictures, peptic ulcer disease, or PUD, upper GI bleeding, anemia, malabsorption of certain vitamins, including B12, iron, and calcium, vomiting, nausea, as well as heartburn, wound infections, incisional and internal hernias, as well as the risk of weight gain. One of the more concerning complications of our staple procedure is the dreaded leak. You can see some of the signs and symptoms presented here. All of the bariatric procedures we've been discussing could have postoperative complications, including cardiopulmonary issues, MI or heart attack, a pulmonary embolism or DVTs, pneumonia, atelectasis, kidney and liver issues, psychosocial issues, including anorexia nervosa and bulimia, postoperative depression, dysfunctionality in the social environment, psychosis, weight gain, and even death. In most patients, bariatric surgery resolves comorbid conditions associated with obesity, such as diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea, hypertension, even high cholesterol. This results in lower morbidity and mortality rates compared to those patients who have not had the surgery. The reduction of these ailments, or comorbid conditions, results in a significant lower health care utilization and overall health care costs. Ongoing patient care includes early and postoperative patient monitoring. Early postoperative care consists of monitoring your vitals, making sure your pain is under control, getting you out of bed and ambulating early, the use of incentive spirometry, and watching out for complications. Follow-up care subscribes to nutrition and diet plans, regular exercise, undergoing behavior counseling and therapy, monthly to yearly visits, and if you've chosen the gastric band, it also includes adjustments as necessary. Some of the general indications for fills and adjustments include the following. The amount of food you consume, the types of foods you consume, the understanding of changing behavior and changing the four W's, what, when, where, and why you eat. Weight loss may vary between different procedures. With the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, it averages more weight loss than the laparoscopic gastric band, but it depends on the following rules. You have to avoid sweets and snacking, avoid liquids high in calories, and remember, it's a tool, not a miracle. The weight loss with the laparoscopic gastric band is more gradual than the other procedures. It continues longer up to two years. About one-third to two-thirds of your excess weight is lost, but it also depends on similar rules. Please remember, this is a tool, not a miracle. Indications for a successful outcome can vary. Those individuals with a lack of knowledge regarding bariatric surgery, the lack of social support, individuals with a lack of motivation and poor insight, those with unrealistic expectations regarding the surgery are probably going to have poor outcomes. But those individuals 
who are demonstrating good knowledge base regarding this procedure, those individuals with the support of spouse, family, and significant others, those who are self-directed, those individuals with good coping skills will have better outcomes. In conclusion, surgically induced weight loss in morbid obesity improves or resolves comorbidities. It decreases mortality risks. It decreases the risks of developing new health-related conditions, reducing the healthcare utilization and direct healthcare costs for our patients. If you have any questions or concerns that have not been addressed during this presentation, please feel free to contact our facility. We have a whole team dedicated to your success in better health and I would like to thank you for your time.